another YouTube video of G Auto Repair. Today we're going to be doing brakes on a 2020 Kia Stinger GT. And as you can see, this has some really heavy duty uh, Brembo brakes um, because this is a sportsy type of vehicle. So it, uh, it gets up there in speed. So you gotta be able to bring that down. Um, we're just gonna do a brake job on it. So I already removed the, the wheels. I already got it on the lift. I removed the wheels. And uh, the first thing we wanna do is compress the, um, the calipers. And to do that, there's all type of fancy schmancy tools you can use, but I like to use on this type of setup, just two pry bars or screwdrivers. And we're kind of just gonna wedge them in here between the pad and the, um, let me see if I can get a close up here. Between the pad and the, and the rotor. Just like that. See? And we're gonna, we're gonna carefully, I'm gonna use a smaller one. And we're just gonna carefully kind of just wedge it in there and, and pry up against the, um, the rotor just enough to wiggle the, the pry bar in there. And then we're just gonna separate the pad from the, from the uh, rotor. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And it, it should be relatively easy to do. It's just a matter of getting a good bite on the material here to kind of apply some leverage. There we go. See? Now we get both of them. And we just compress the pistons. There's going to be four of them. So this is not a floating type of... Uh, caliper system so this is the only way you're gonna get this to compress all right so now you should have this nice gap here between the pads and the rotor okay so once that's done now I'm gonna service the disc break uh, the discs so I'm gonna cut them resurface them leave them real nice uh, I'm not going to show that on this video because our, I already have a video on how to resurface rotors. Um, I encourage you to see that video if you have any questions on that. Um, so there should be two. In this case, it's going to be 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper to the, the back of the knuckle here. I don't know if you guys can see that. See, right there. One and two. Look. So, I'm going to use a, 50, a 17 millimeter swivel socket and an impact. And as a matter of fact, I have to loosen. Oh, I lost my impact gun there for a sec. Okay, no big. We're gonna loosen this 10 millimeter screw here. And that will give me more. That will give me more. More of a. Flexibility when I pull out the. The caliper. Okay, so we're just gonna come here. Drop the washer. Huh? Oh, sorry for the noise. I got the fan and there's somebody mowing a yard nearby, so we may get a little bit of a of noise. Okay. So then this is relatively light. It's not heavy compared to others that I've worked on. So I'm gonna use this S hook here just to kind of secure the caliper up here okay okay it's just gonna secure it you we don't want to we don't want to 
we don't want to just let the the caliper go and, and let it rest on the let all that weight rest on the on the hoses that's not good it's not good at all so in this case we have two screws securing the actual rotor to the hub so to remove that i'm going to use an impact driver with this brass hammer oh this one's actually loose huh okay that makes my job a little bit easier let's see this one no. okay so we want to twist get a good firm hold on it and just strike it and the impact driver will do the rest so this is a number three Phillips that I'm using here there we go. I'm just gonna set this aside and I'll put it, this right here for now okay now generally speaking this is it should slide off but normally it won't because of rust and stuff so what I'm gonna do is just strike it with a with a soft metal like a brass uh, hammer and you can just strike it right here in, in the face of the of the rotor here just to break it loose there that's all it takes okay and that's it you just pull it right on out so now that we got that done I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video right here I'm gonna go ahead and machine this and then I'm I'll, I'll, I'll reinstall it and we'll finish the, the job here all right so we're back I already resurfaced the rotor as you can see it looks very pretty everything is within spec I already put the two uh, screws back on there to secure it now we're just gonna put the caliper back on and replace the pads so I'm gonna turn this all the way without touching this surface too much and I'm gonna grab the caliper and just slide it back in its place and we're going to put the two screws back two bolts back Okay, we're gonna start everything by hand. Make sure we don't we don't cross thread anything. And we're gonna use the impact just to I have my impact set at the lowest setting so I won't over torque anything. I'm sure somebody's gonna have an issue with that. Those uh uh, torque wrench loving individuals out there I'm sorry <laughs> I rarely use a torque wrench unless I'm doing heads or something like that everything else I just get a feel for I haven't had an issue so I'm sorry to disappoint uh, some out there all right so to remove the pads we got to remove these two pins with this uh, pressure spring plate thing that's what gives uh, these pads a little bit of tension to cut down on noise and vibration things of that nature so we got to get that out in order to slide the uh, the pads out so I'm just gonna use my brass hammer again and this uh, extra long uh, punch and just little taps I mean it's, you know you don't have to get off crazy with it and it should start sliding right on out and that's all it takes there we go there we go let me put this back on here before I forget get in there Gonna let me put this down here. 
we're just gonna apply some pressure here and wiggle it out that's it that's all it takes and we're gonna do the same down here where we really don't have to apply much pressure anymore because it's loose and then the worn out pads slide right on out now notice the orientation of these pads notice this you will see an R and an L L and an R that can be kind of confusing because it's always going to be an R and an L put together on each you're never going to have an RR or an LL it's just the way it is this will make the biggest difference here so you just make sure that you put it the same way it came out is the same way you put it back in here are the new pads these are extreme uh, uh, pro stop pads supplied by the customer as you can see they're identical see the little this right here is to kind of scratch the rotor when it's worn out it makes it a squealing noise is to let you know that uh, hey it's time for new pads so that's all that's there for okay. see L R R L so we pull we pull the old ones and then we're just gonna slide the new ones in that's it simple as that okay now we got to get this back in here so we just got to line up the holes here okay put this in here we're gonna kind of tap that in there it goes in by pressure it goes in by pressure you don't have to screw or remove any clips on some systems like the Toyota ones you have to actually remove these little cotter pin looking things and and that's what releases it not this this just goes hammered in here this is what locks it in there this little collar right here all right so we're gonna do the same here Okay, we're gonna apply pressure and we're gonna slide the pin in, line up all the holes, grab my little brass hammer to help me kind of force everything in there and we're there. Now I'm gonna just get this punch and just give it a couple taps until I feel a, a solid hit, just like that. It should be only about a millimeter, if that. There. and then I'm going to just kind of make contact with the rotor there now when I get in the in the vehicle I'm gonna pump the brakes to get everything to properly seat and I'll be ready for the test drive so I'm gonna go ahead and put the tire back on there and lower the car and all that good jazz and when I'm getting ready to test drive I'll go ahead and uh, turn the camera back on just to cut some time give me a few minutes all right guys so I went ahead and pumped the brakes and I'm already test driving the car this is a very important part of the brake job that uh, even a lot of uh, quote unquote professionals neglect they're more interested in getting the money than to doing the job right and this is what is called the uh, burnishing process so we have to finish curing the pad and to do that we have to do a series of uh, stops and goes and uh, there's different ways of doing it but what I do is normally I, I go from 30 to fully stopped about five or six times you know just light to moderate um, brake application and after I do that I slow down from maybe about 60 to 40 or 35 somewhere around there and I do that another three four five six times just to heat up the pad enough to cure the pad and to prevent uh, you can't do it too fast or too aggressively because if not uh, the oils in the in the pad will boil over to the surface and glaze and then you have some noise issues so it takes 15 20 minutes to do you know just go for a nice test drive and do a series of stops and 
slow downs and stuff like that and that should be enough and a lot of people don't want to do that because it takes time and like I said they're more interested in getting paid than anything else I always like to go on a on a, a brief test drive after I do brakes just to make sure everything's as it should be you may notice some uh, like after you drive it for a few minutes you may notice some smoke and a burnt clutch smell coming from your brakes that's totally normal that'll only last for about a day or so and once the pads cure that'll go away and you'll never notice that again so what I'm doing here is I'm just safely getting up to speed you know 50 60 miles an hour whatever uh, I can safely do in these streets and then I just slow down to about 30 35 or so and then I accelerate again slow down again so I do that several times and that should should take care of that um, again this was just a, a brake job for a 2020 Kia Stinger GT and not a very difficult job but even in something as simple as brakes there's a little bit of science and technique to it so that's always important and i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh please like and subscribe and and uh and i'll catch you guys on the next video till then ciao